The opening scene features a maintenance worker named Chad, who is renovating a room of a grand old building. During this, a hole on the wall, behind him spits up a ball of putty. Chad attempts to cover it, but his efforts prove futile. Intrigued, he inserts his hand into the hole, only to be scratched by something inside. He instantly pulls it back and a necklace with a strange-looking amulet falls out of it. Later in the evening, his girlfriend, Lena comes there to meet him with some beers. Chad gives her the same necklace as a gift and puts it on her neck. As he turns around to open a beer bottle, Lena suddenly commits the unthinkable. Terrified, Chad runs out of the room to get help and room 203 is revealed as he slams the door. The scene then cuts to a young woman named Kim White, who is about to start her college education in a new city. She has decided to move into a newly rented apartment with her best friend, Izzy, an aspiring actress. Kim's parents, however, are not at all supportive of this idea because of Izzy's past history with drugs and cases of overdose. As they drive her towards the city, they warn her that they won't keep any contact with her if she moves in with Izzy. Despite this, she ignores them and goes to the apartment where Izzy is waiting for her. Following this, the two best friends meet the creepy-looking landlord, Ronan, who gives them a tour and warns them to stay out of the basement. He also explains that the apartments were just renovated, so all the flats are empty and the only other tenant on that floor is himself. He then leads them to their apartment where the girls are mesmerized by a large stained glass window, depicting medieval knights killing each other. Kim also sees a small hole on the wall of her room and tries to cover it up by hanging a mirror over it. However, it doesn't work as the mirror either keeps tilting or falls to the ground. Later on, the two girls spend the night drinking and dancing on some pretty loud music. The next morning, Izzy notices the hole in the wall and tries reaching inside. She then pulls out the same necklace from earlier and starts wearing it. That evening, the girls visit a pub and share drinks with two strangers. After a while of hanging out, they return back to their place, with Izzy bringing one of the guys named Tony. The two make out down the hall, which is witnessed by Ronan. Following this, Kim goes to bed, while Tony and Izzy head to her room. However, she immediately falls asleep, leaving him unsatisfied. Tony then goes to the kitchen and grabs a drink. While relieving himself in the bathroom, an unseen figure passes by and moments later, he is fatally stabbed with a knife. The following morning, Izzy assumes that he left before she woke up. This is because the body has somehow vanished from the washroom. Just then, Kim realizes that she's late for her orientation class so she hurriedly gets ready and rushes towards her college. But despite her best efforts, she ends up missing it completely. As she is contemplating on what to do next, a tour guide named Ian approaches her. He offers to give her a private tour of the campus in exchange for a coffee. Kim agrees, and they soon bond over their shared passion for journalism. Through their conversation, we learn that Kim has been helping Izzy to cope with the death of her mother and subsequent drug use. Ian advises her to start writing down all of her experiences, because she'll soon have to submit a journal to a notoriously difficult professor. Afterwards, Kim returns home and finds a note from Izzy, informing her that she's out for some drinks. Being alone, she decides to heed Ian's advice to write a paper on Izzy's life. Late at night, Kim is awakened by fluttering sounds and witnesses a bird-like creature slither into the hole in her wall. As she slowly goes to check, she is startled by the banging on the door. When she opens it, she finds Izzy, who has a music box in her hand and blood spilling down from her head. Worried, Kim takes care of her and keeps her company all night. In the morning, she questions Izzy about what happened, and the latter attributes her actions to sleepwalking. When Kim tries to ask more, Izzy ignores the question and instead shows her a newly installed lock on her door to prevent any recurrence. As they converse, she reveals that she met a woman named Sandy at the bar, who happens to be a casting assistant, and she's going to get her a part on a TV show. In turn, Kim also shares about Ian, expressing that she likes him. Later on, Kim attends her virtual class, where she shares her intention to write her paper based on her best friend's story. She asks whether she should take permission from her friend before doing so. Sticking to the code of journalism, the professor tells her that it's not compulsory until she keeps the character anonymous. 
In the afternoon, Izzy goes for a TV audition, while Kim goes out for a coffee date with Ian. During this, she shares about how Izzy's mother died of an accidental overdose, and this caused her to plunge into depression. At one point, Izzy even tried to commit the unthinkable, but failed. Returning home, Kim continues to work on her journal when she hears their front door open. She peeps through her room door and sees Izzy and Sandy, who soon begin to make out. Kim opts not to disturb them and goes to bed. At midnight, she wakes up to the sounds of the music box and follows it to the living room. There, she finds Izzy holding it and staring at the stained glass window. As Kim reaches her, Izzy screams as if in a possessed trance and runs towards the restricted basement. Despite being scared, Kim follows her and manages to retrieve the music box from her hand. Finally, out of the trance, Izzy wets herself and cries out loud due to fear. Being the good friend that she is, Kim brings her back to her room and consoles her lovingly. The next day, she confides in Ian about what's been going on, including the musical box, the hole in her room, and the necklace Izzy retrieved from it. In response, he advises her to research this matter and also agrees to help her in it. After this, the two return to her apartment, only to find Ronan staring at the stained glass. He reprimands Kim, harshly, for having gone down to the basement. As the landlord leaves, the two start researching the history of the apartment. After a while, they find out about a bank manager named Liam McNally who had murdered his pregnant wife, Karen, before killing himself in the very apartment they're staying, apartment 203. The pair realize that those are the names inscribed inside the music box that Izzy used to carry around during her sleepwalking. Their conversation eventually takes a romantic turn and they end up sleeping together. The same night, Kim is startled awake by a noise in her room and is horrified to see a raven at the edge of her bed. She screams in terror, waking up Ian beside her. He looks around but finds nothing, so he comforts her saying it's just a dream. The following day, while Kim is away, a delivery man brings two packs of paper ordered by her to the apartment. Izzy receives it on behalf of her friend and takes it to Kim's room. There, she finds the pre-printed journal that Kim wrote about her and becomes displeased. Meanwhile, Kim goes to meet with Milton Briggs, the janitor who had reported Karen's murder years ago. Milton is initially hesitant to talk about it, but he agrees when Kim tells him that she now lives in the same apartment. As they converse, he reveals that McNally's baby survived, but he doesn't know what happened to him. Armed with this information, Kim returns to the apartment, only to be confronted by Izzy about the journal. She accuses her of betrayal when she needed her the most. Kim tries to tell her about the apartment's creepy history, but Izzy dismisses her and storms off in anger. On the other hand, Ian visits St. Mark's Cathedral to compare the stained glass windows there to the pictures he found in room 203. He soon realizes one of his pictures is upside down and actually depicts a demon. When he further connects the images to Celtic pagan symbols, he learns that it matches with an Irish mythology figure Morigu, who often appears in the form of a crow and symbolizes death. Back at the apartment, Kim, who is upset by the argument, starts hammering the hole on the wall until a shriveled up, nasty old hand from a dead body falls out of it, freaking her out. Right then, Ronan shows up from behind and abducts her before tying her up in his room. It is at this moment that he reveals he is none other than the son of Liam and Karen McNally, and the necklace Izzy has been wearing belonged to his mother. According to him, the curse chooses its victim through the necklace and compels them to kill oneself as well as others. However, Izzy is somehow resisting it, likely due to her resilience from her troubled past. Fearing that Morigu will come after him, Ronan now intends to kill both the tenants and present them as sacrificial offerings. Meanwhile, Ian, who is aware of the truth, rushes to Kim's apartment to save her. Upon arriving, he stumbles upon Izzy, who is seemingly possessed. She pretends to seduce him, but soon showcases her demonic version and claims his life. Simultaneously, Ronan pins Kim down and starts reciting a ritual from his father's diary. But as he is about to kill her, she kicks him off, retrieves his knife and stabs him in the eye. She then flees towards her room, where she is greeted by the grim sight of Ian's dead body. Heartbroken, she apologizes to him and covers him with a blanket. At the same time, she spots Izzy heading down to the basement. 
Kim follows her, narrowly escaping the grasp of Ronan. After a prolonged chase, Ronan finally catches up to her. He draws his gun to shoot her, but at the same time, he gets possessed by the demon and ends up turning the gun on himself. Following this, Kim continues searching for Izzy and eventually finds her at the other end of a long hall amidst the flickering lights. Izzy shifts between her real self, who asks for help, and her possessed self, who grins and laughs scarily. Kim instructs her to take off the necklace, but Izzy is clearly unable to control Morigu within her. In a sudden turn of events, Izzy attacks Kim and stabs her in the stomach. But just as she is about to finish her off, Kim rips off the cursed necklace from her neck, finally freeing her from the possession. The two friends then walk up to their apartment with the intention of breaking down the stained glass window, but are spooked by hundreds of crows flying right outside their window in an eerie manner. Despite this, Kim musters up her courage, grabs the hammer, and hurls it at the window, shattering it into pieces. Following this, Izzy rushes the in